Ooh, this lighting is horrible, but it is finally in. The DJI FPV combo, the Fly More Pack, and the little magic wandy thing, or dildo, or whatever you want to call it. I think we've seen plenty of unboxings, and if you haven't, just search on YouTube under DJI FPV Unboxing, and you can watch tons of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, get it set up, and then I'll let you guys know how quick and easy it is to set up compared to, say, the DJI Mini 2. And then we're gonna take this thing outside and get somewhere with better light, because this is just, this is horrendous right now. I've been trying to figure out what the heck can I do that you haven't already seen about the DJI FPV drone and poof, it hit me. There are so many people out there that have something like the Mavic Air 2 or the Mavic Mini 2 and you're wondering, is this new DJI FPV drone something that I should get? Is it the next step, the next evolution for me? I've made a super long list right here of all kinds of notes that I thought as a regular aerial drone pilot that I would have liked to have known and I've not been able to see answers to these on any drone videos about the FPV drone anywhere yet. So I thought I'd make one and hopefully this does help answer the questions that you might have about this drone and if it's worth getting. Now before we get too far into this video, I'm gonna stop right here and let you know that if you're interested in getting into drones and you don't have a drone and you're more into aerial videography, aerial photography, then the DJI FPV drone should not be your first drone. So when we get back to the video that you were watching, you're gonna be able to watch me fly the DJI FPV drone and the Mini 2 with it in FPV mode, which sort of mimics the idea of an FPV drone. So if you are interested and you have been wondering which of these drones is for you and you are new into it, make sure you watch both of those flights. And if you already have something like an Air 2 or a Mini 2 or some other DJI type drone, make sure you watch all the way to the end where I go over if I think this drone is right for you if you're curious about getting into FPV. One thing that was really important to me was that the Mini 2 and the FPV DJI drone could fly at the high altitudes where I live. I live over 9,000 feet. I go up to over 13,000 feet all the time to fly these things. So it was really important to me that the rating for both of these drones could handle those high altitudes above sea level. Luckily, the DJI FPV drone can handle heights of over 19,000 feet, where we already know from my other videos like that, that the Mini 2 can handle over 13,000 feet above sea level. One of the first things that I noticed right out of the box when you get the thumbsticks put onto the controller is, well, one, the thumbsticks have a completely different connection. It's really tiny and skinny compared to the thumbsticks that screw into your Air 2, your, your Mini 2, and all your other DJI Mavic style drones. It's a completely different setup, as well as the thumbsticks themselves have a completely different type of spring tension. You probably already know this, but the, the Mini 2 can only go a certain mile per hour versus the DJI FPV drone. Even in sports mode, you can get up to 60 miles per hour, they claim, and the Mini 2 just isn't gonna hit that. Now to fly, to fly the DJI FPV drone, you have to have a spotter technically when you're wearing the goggles, which is why that crazy person is here with me. That's Gina, by the way, if you haven't seen her in my previous videos at some point or another. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing all goggled up and give it its first flight. So if you wanna like let someone else see what you can see, you can use your phone as a second screen and you can see like it's only a two axis gimbal. That's why when I 
go side to side, the picture goes side to side. Unlike the Mini 2, which is a three axis gimbal, which when you go side to side, it actually locks in place unless you turn FPV mode on like we're gonna today. So there's a pad around the goggles here. I can see light coming in all on my screen. So you can sort of see that green on the left and the right there, that comes through as I'm wearing the goggles. So I think I'm gonna be looking for an aftermarket foam piece because the way these are, they need to be pushed in like this. You Otherwise, look like Ant-Man. Yeah, I'm, I feel like Ant-Man. I'm gonna be making some eyeballs and different designs that fit on these too. If you guys aren't familiar with my uh, sticker store, check the description below. I make all kinds of fun stickers. You could look like a praying mantis so dang easy with some cool eyes. So you start recording video here, um, you start it just like a regular Mini or Mavic in this mode, normal mode, and sports mode. I haven't gone through any of the settings yet. This is so weird to me to, to take off because I'm not used to flying like this with it in FPV mode. And as you can see, it, uh, well, what was that? Something touched me. Did you touch me? I didn't mean to a different angle. So that's the reason you have a spotter, not so that they fuck with you and touch you, but just so that they can make sure no one else does. So we are, oh, that's cool. On my screen, I see a little H that shows where we are. There should be, yep, angle the gimbal just like normal. So the big difference, as you can see, as we fly forward, It flies just like the Mavic Mini or Mavic Air 2 or the Mini 2. However, the gimbal is not staying straight and it seems to be a little more responsive and zippier. Now you can still fly it and try to keep your gimbal pretty straight. It's pretty shaky right now to me in the, the footage. I don't know if Rocksteady is actually on at the moment and you can see I can see my props in the shot, um, which sort of sucks, but as you bank, you can see it banks left and right with the with the drone, the gimbal doesn't hold it in position whatsoever. That doesn't mean you can't still get some pretty level flying just by counter turning with your yaw and turning with your, your roll and yaw at the same time. And you can still get your, your horizon to stay pretty solid. It's just a matter of how you fly it. So here we are just flying over the lake. We're just gonna go around the lake. And I really hate that the props are in the shot. And on this part of the controller, it's sort of hard to tell with gloves on. Flip that, now we're in sports mode. I think I'm gonna have to readjust a whole lot of stuff in this, but as you can see, you can cruise the side of the lake and back a lot faster. When you're in sports mode in normal mode, you can actually change the pitch of your gimbal to look down just like you can in like a regular drone or regular DJI drone and cruise around and you get this like banking left and right. I can't believe there's water over there. That's already melted that much, that's crazy. I love that the home thing shows, that is so cool. So I'm gonna come back and try to land and make some changes and then we'll do this again. With this, you can't really see straight below you. As you can see, I can see those stairs there. I'm gonna actually put it back in normal mode so I don't accidentally go crazy fast. And you can land it and bring it down to where you can see it. Do you see it yet? Oh, there it is. And then you can pull the goggles up. And that's sort of cool because it just will hover. With the goggles, like, they don't have like a place to put your battery in it like this. You can buy aftermarket straps that do, but you would think DJI would just like, boom, just a little short like cord and, and poof, put your battery right there in your goggles and you don't have to worry about unplugging it while you're flying or any of that kind of crap. So I got about eight minutes worth of flight time before the auto return to home kicked in and it forced me to sort of fly it back home. DJI says that you can get 20 minutes out of this thing and if you go into their spec sheet, that's flying at like 20 miles per hour in normal mode only. But I'm also at 9,000 feet so I'm gonna get less flight time than what I would if I was at sea level. My goodness, that's a lot of money to just have six minutes of flight time, man. So now that we've gotten that remarkable eight minutes worth of flight time with this new $1,299 drone, let's take out this like $500 drone, put it in sports mode, hit record, and see how long of a flight time I get with that getting similar shots with the FPV 
mode turned on. And if you guys don't know how to turn that on, it's just as easy as clicking a little tab in the Fly app and that locks the gimbal in place so you get that same side to side motion. All you have to do to switch to that FPV mode is go to control and you can see right there it says follow mode or poof, FPV mode, and there you go. It, whew, it is really cold today, so I'm sure that's also affecting the battery length on both of these drones. We've got it in normal mode at first. We've started recording, started those props. We're gonna go straight up. And there we go. Remember, it is in FPV mode, so that's gonna make it look totally different. It's not nearly as smooth as the actual FPV drone is in FPV mode, so we're probably gonna turn that off. Let's turn it in sports mode, and now we're, as I roll to the right, you see it sort of rolls to the right too. And as I turn, the big difference is it doesn't actually level out and look that smooth like it did in the other drone. That wind is crazy. I am fighting those winds to even get back to where I took off from. So I'm not a big fan of the FPV mode in the uh, other drones, the regular drones, because it is sort of clunky, as you can see. Like, we, we can go like this and pretend like we're an FPV pilot and get that back and forth. But it just, it just doesn't, when you let go, it snaps and it's all weird and crooked and it's just, it doesn't look good. So let's go ahead and get back in here. We're gonna turn that off and put it back into follow mode. And now we're gonna have it working similar to what it should. We are in sports mode. And sometimes in sports mode, the Mavic Mini 2 gives us uh, a little bit of gimbal glitch here and there. So there is that same stream that we were flying over with the FPV drone. And there, there is that glitch I was just telling you about. So we put it in normal mode, slows it down considerably. We're now only going about 15 miles per hour. And we're following over that stream. And I am gonna get back in sports mode because that feels so slow now. 30 miles per hour feels really slow. So we're gonna do this shot. See, these are cool shots. You can't really get a shot like that so easily with that FPV drone. Oh, and there's that gimbal kick that you get with the Mini 2 when it's in sports mode. That's the biggest downside about that drone is the gimbal just, it's not robust enough to really stay in place when you're flying at faster speeds. And it's not just forwards, it's the side-to-side the -side kick that really screws with me. That wind is kicking up again. Let's see if we can start working our way back over here. We're in sports mode trying to get over to the other lake right now. And those winds are only letting us go 12 miles per hour, 11 miles per hour. And I am punching it trying to get this thing back over to me. I can't even get it to go over past the stream. I'm gonna come down a little lower. Another cool thing with this drone is you have all these modes you can do. You can do quick shots in photo mode. You can do single time shots. You can do panos. I can do a 180 pano with this and just let it do its thing. It's just gonna hover there and take all these pictures to make a pano shot that you don't even have to edit yourself. It's just, it's just gonna edit it for you. So if you're really wanting photography, video, and you're wanting it to just be something that you can do with ease, I'm not sure if the FPV drone is really for you. You can also do 4K60 on the Mini 2, something that the Mini 1 wasn't capable of doing, which lets you be able to slow that footage down and post. So you notice like how much more ground I covered in that eight minutes flying with the other drone versus this one. I only got over that lake and back like once. That is a huge difference. I can also turn the gimbal all the way down and see exactly where I'm landing with this drone and you cannot do that. For some reason they didn't let you turn it to that degree. I don't know why, but the FPV drone didn't let you. With the Mini 2, you can fly it like right back into an area like this and land right in your hand. The Mini 2 has no front sensors, something to keep in mind. I could have just ran right into my face right there. If you already own a Mini 2, an Air 2, or one of DJI's other camera drones, would this new DJI FPV be a good fit for you to jump into that FPV world? Hell yes. And let me tell you why. First and foremost, you get DJI goggles and a controller 
with your purchase for $12.99. Although that controller does not currently work with version one air units, meaning that you can't use that controller with the DJI system that's already out there. We all pretty much know that DJI is gonna release a version two air unit soon enough that quads will start to be preloaded with or that you can use to build your own custom builds. So something to keep in mind is that when you were buying version one with the controller, you were looking at 800 to 900 bucks anyways. So in this case, that makes the drone worth about 400 bucks, give or take, which really isn't that insane if you start looking into what it would cost you if you had nothing and you wanted to get into FPV from the ground up. For example, if you got something like the Flywoo Explorer with the version one air unit, it's going to run you give or take about $250. And let's not forget, you'd still need to add a camera that was comparable to the camera that's on the FPV drone. And something like the GoPro 7, the GoPro 8, or even the 9 is anywhere from another $200 to $400. Not to mentioned batteries and battery chargers having to take the time to learn how to use a proper rc battery charger one that you could actually then double up and use for rc cars and so many other things but you'd still have to learn how if you have no experience with this and it's not as easy as just plug and play like it is with the dji unit if you don't already know how to solder and have soldering equipment laying around you're gonna have to get some of that stuff it's not hard but it it can be a pain in the ass and it's a little itchy if you get the flux on you. So for someone that has no FPV experience and you wanna jump into it, yeah, go ahead, get one. Or if you don't wanna spend that kind of money, then I would suggest something like one of these Tiny Hawk kits, all for under 200 bucks. I did a video about it there. So if you made it this far into this video and you're actually this curious about getting into the FPV game and if this was the right way to go, I'd suggest taking a look at that video and doing a comparison to see if you wanna go in to this for $200 or if you wanna jump into this for $1,299. Hopefully this video has helped you make up your mind if you were on the fence and make sure if you have not already hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification because I am doing a series of videos on this drone and my journey with it going from the little tiny hawks into something this size and as I continue this summer into other FPV drones. That's what I want to do. I want to fly a real plane. Hopefully this summer we'll be building a little, little, little. You don't care about me building a wing, do you? If so, let me know in the comments below. We're going to go now. That's the end of this video. What a weird ending. How about some bloopers? I don't know. Stop it. Hey. Oh, come on. Hey. Shh. Hey. Oh, it is really cold today. I just can't feel my face, so we are going to land this. I'm, holy crap. I am actually freezing my butt off about whew, this drone. God, it's cold. Stop the footage. 10 minutes worth of footage. Oh. I know I'm sort of all over the place while I'm filming, but hopefully this all comes together at the end.